I'm sure you've seen an image like one of these before. It's an easily understandable meme format that showcases the four most iconic things within a genre. And it's pretty fun to hop onto Photoshop to dunk on Jerry by telling him that Ritz is the Teddy Roosevelt of crackers. However, I've been thinking about what the Mount Rushmore of superhero characters would look like recently, because the answer is a lot more complicated than you would think. I mean, sure, the top three spots are pretty set in stone. Superman, Batman, and Spider-Man. But that fourth pick is where things get interesting. Because no other superhero really comes close to the level of notoriety or bank that the big three bring in. Who could that fourth slot possibly be? The Hulk? Captain America? Wonder Woman? Flash? Arm fall off boy? But by asking the question, it makes me ask even more questions. Because characters like Iron Man and Captain America have only really skyrocketed in popularity again in the last 15 or so years. So who were the go-to options for that coveted fourth spot 20 years ago? What about 25? 30? 50? 80? So before I tell you all what the fourth most popular superhero is right now, I think it'd be fun to look back throughout the decades to discover which heroes were most popular throughout their eras. And maybe, by taking a look back at all of the forgotten heroes of our past, we can learn something about what it takes for a hero to stand the test of time. Characters in consideration will be limited to the big two, Marvel and DC. Now, there are plenty of third-party heroes that were and are wildly popular, but unfortunately, it would be disrespectful to compare them to the big two. They deserve a video of their own. We will be ranking characters on two categories, an era-exclusive Rushmore and an all-time Rushmore. Characters will be considered based on sales figures within the era, cultural impact and relevance, and finally, the most important factor, my opinion. So without further ado, let's discover the superhero Mount Rushmore throughout the ages. Getting accurate sales numbers for the earlier years of comics is actually pretty difficult, so I have to rely on resale value comics to get a gauge of what characters are the most profitable, which isn't too bad of an inconvenience, but the resale value isn't always indicative of the popularity of characters at the time. But I have to work with what I got. Some of the characters in the running for this era are Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Shazam, Captain America, Robin, Aquaman, Green Arrow, Doctor Fate, Namor, The Flash, and The Green Lantern. And let's just get the obvious ones out of the way. Batman and Superman are obviously making the Mount Rushmore. No need to overthink it. However, the conversations get interesting when discussing those other two slots. I think right off the bat, we can eliminate Green Lantern and The Flash from the running. I mean, sure, these characters are more widely known than some of the others mentioned. However, Alan Scott and Jay Garrick specifically are not. The Flash and Green Lantern that are thought about today are their Silver Age incarnations. Alan Scott and Jay Garrick are iconic in their own right and paved the way for those Silver Age incarnations, but they have largely been overshadowed by the other characters holding their own mantle. Aquaman is disqualified on the grounds of being Aquaman, Green Arrow, Doctor Fate, and Namor, while being popular and well-known characters in their own right, don't really stack up to the other characters of this era. Robin, while being one of the best characters in the Batman mythos, doesn't make the rush more, precisely because of my first statement. He's an important Batman character, but in this era, mostly plays second fiddle to the Cape Crusader. The next character up for consideration is Wonder Woman, and Wonder Woman makes the rush more. She's the first female superhero, she's one of the most recognizable faces in comics, and she's a member of the DC Trinity. It would feel weird to leave her out of the rush more and away from her boys. Which leaves us with Captain America and Shazam. Both of these characters were staples of their respective era, and generations thereafter. However, there is only one slot to fill. And while Captain America was big in his era, many of the most memorable and well-beloved stories and aspects to his lore today would only be expanded upon in his Silver Age reintroduction. 
so Shazam gets the spot. Now, Shazam is worthy of making the Golden Age rush war. However, putting Shazam over Captain America might need a tad bit of explanation. So, Shazam, or Captain Marvel as he was called at the time, was created by comic book publisher Fawcett Comics to be a direct competitor to Superman in his popularity. He was such an effective competitor that for a short time, he was actually outselling the Man of Steel. In fact, the only reason Captain Marvel's sales dominance over Superman didn't continue was because of a long legal battle that DC had launched against Fawcett Comics for being a blatant ripoff of Superman. And after DC won the lawsuit, Otto Binder, a consistent Captain Marvel writer, jumped ship to write for Superman comics. And thus, Superman comics took on many of the aspects of the Captain Marvel comics at the time. Supergirl and Superboy were DC's responses to Miss Marvel and the rest of the Marvel family. The more wacky and fantastical Superman plots are a direct inspiration from Captain Marvel stories. Even one of the most iconic aspects of Superman's character, flight, only exists in direct response to Captain Marvel. So not only did Shazam outperform Superman financially for a bit, his existence was the catalyst for how we perceive Superman today. And while Captain America was a key figure in the Golden Age in his own right, he isn't quite to the level of the other four. However, Cap might have another chance in the next era we're going to talk about. Next up is the Silver Age, the revitalization of superheroes after the initial decline after World War II. And with this resurgence, DC saw the rise of their greatest competitor. After the Golden Age of Comics, Timely Comics, the publisher of Captain America, Namor, and the original Human Torch, went through some rebranding. And they kicked off their rebrand with a bang, introducing characters like the Hulk, Iron Man, Thor, the Fantastic Four, Ant-Man, Daredevil, Black Panther, the Avengers, the X-Men. Oh yeah, and Marvel also introduced this like massive dud character with this guy who has like the powers of a spider. I have to be honest, Marvel made some bangers in this era, but this idea sucks. I mean, look at Thor. He's inspired by a god. This bozo was inspired by God's mistake. DC also released some notable heroes in this era, like Hal Jordan Green Lantern, Barry Allen Flash, Batgirl, Supergirl, as well as the Justice League of America, and the Teen Titans. So yeah, as you might be able to tell, there's a lot more competition for this Mount Rushmore. But, there are some easy omissions. The X-Men were extremely popular, both commercially and culturally. But none of the OG members from the Silver Age have reached a level of individual success as some of the other future X-Men that might be up for consideration later. The same goes for the Teen Titans and the Fantastic Four. Characters like Daredevil, Ant-Man, Supergirl, and Batgirl really don't have the widespread popularity that the other characters in contention have. So after all the obvious omissions are out of the way, we can start filling out our Silver Age Mount Rushmore a little bit. First spot to be taken is Spider-Man. Can't possibly imagine anybody would complain about this selection. Next up is the character that kicked off the Silver Age himself, The Flash. The Flash not only kicked off the Silver Age of comics, a Flash comic was the first ever multiverse story with 1961's The Flash 123. Not to mention, The Flash is debatably the best legacy character ever. The next shoe-in for the Rushmore is the Incredible Hulk. Outside of the team-up groups, the Hulk was one of Marvel's most popular characters. And with a theme song like this, how could he not be? Thus, leaves the last spot available, and between the remaining heroes, it's a tough choice. But I think I'm gonna have to go with my gut here, 
and select the Invincible Iron Man. The margin of culture when packed is pretty minuscule between these characters. However, Iron Man's first appearance is more valuable than both Thor and Green Lanterns. I really wouldn't fault anybody for putting either Thor or Green Lantern in here. It's a difficult decision and it could have gone anyway. Moving on to the old time Rushmore, with the introduction of the Silver Age, Wonder Woman and Shazam are getting booted off the list and replaced with Marvel's two most popular characters, Spider-Man and the Hulk. And I know, I know, I said Captain America would have a better chance to make the cut this time in the Silver Age. But, when comparing him to the Hulk, or Spider-Man, or even some of the others that didn't make the cut, he just doesn't stack up in terms of impact. Due to the lawsuit with DC, Fawcett Comics couldn't make Captain Marvel comics. So that's an obvious cut. Wonder Woman didn't do enough in the Silver Age, I feel, to keep her spot. So congratulations to Spider-Man and Hulk for getting on to the all-time Rushmore. For now. Let's see if they can keep their spots in the next era. The Bronze Age, unlike the Golden and Silver Ages, doesn't really have a agreed-upon start time. However, the era is defined by a shifting culture in comics. You see, books were no longer being sold at newsstands, but instead had specified comic book shops. The stories became darker and started to incorporate explicit social and political messaging. Comics, to put it simply, were growing up, and the types of characters that this new comic book culture created were reflective of that. Characters like Ghost Rider, the Spirit of Vengeance, Moon Knight, a deeply mentally ill superhero that may or may not be the vessel of an Egyptian god. The Punisher. He's the Punisher. Luke Cage, the hero for hire, a small-scale hero dealing with gangs and street violence. Swamp Thing, an existential character that is either a man transformed into a monster, or a monster that just believes he's a man. And the most popular Bronze Age character of all, Wolverine. A man that is forced to confront his greatest inconsistencies, being both masculine and Canadian. There are many other characters introduced in this age that aren't as indicative of the darker tone of this era, like many of Logan's teammates. Speaking of teams, this era was the beginning of the modern Teen Titans incarnations, introducing characters like Starfire, Raven, and Cyborg. Beast Boy is also used a lot more in this era as a Titan, but he debuted in the Silver Age. Why didn't I bring him up in the Silver Age section then? That's a very perceptive and great question. You see, that's because... Jon Stewart, Miss Marvel, and Scott Lang Ant-Man were all introduced in this age, solidifying the hero as a mantle idea that began in the Silver Age. But, since they were all not as popular as their predecessors, they won't make the Bronze Age rush more. As much as I like the idea of Swamp Thing, he's not making it either. There's a lot of competition for morally and philosophically complex characters in this era, and unfortunately, Blade will meet the same fate. Most of the X-Men, like Storm, Nightcrawler, and Colossus, will not reach the peak of their popularity until the 90s, so they're all out. All except for Wolverine, who easily makes the rush more. Sharing a spot with Logan is the spirit of vengeance himself, Ghost Rider. The combination between the modern-at-the-time biker getup and the mystical and spiritual elements made for a kick-ass character with a badass design. The next inclusion for this era is the Punisher. The Punisher is one of Marvel's most unique superheroes. I actually even hesitate to call him that because he's just a normal guy with a massive arsenal and no quarrels about using it. The Punisher is kind of like what Batman is afraid he'd become if he abandoned his no-killing rule. Now, the final slot for our Rushmore this era was very hard to fill. Came down to Moon Knight and Luke Cage. But ultimately, I went with Luke Cage. He's Marvel's take on black exploitation from the 70s, and was so popular that Quentin Tarantino was actually planning on making a movie about the character, and is part of the inspiration for Nicholas Coppola wanting to change his name to stand out from his family. So, 
He has to make it just for giving us the glory of Nick Cage. Moving on to the all-time list, there will be no alterations. Wolverine was close and was immensely popular, and Wonder Woman did gain a resurgence in this era thanks to her television program, but the Hulk also had a wildly successful TV show in the 70s. But look at me, I'm using material outside of the comics to compare these superheroes' popularity. I wonder if this is indicative of a trend. But it's called the modern age, why doesn't it end in the current year? To put it simply, the comic book ages are stupid. From the golden to the bronze age of comics, there's generally an agreed upon start and end point. They all roughly last 15 years, give or take. However, anything past the bronze age is simply considered the modern age of comics, which spans almost 40 years, which is certainly a decision. But given that it's a stupid ass decision, I've elected to ignore it. So, I'm splitting up the modern age into two sections, the first of which is from 1986 to 2007, and the other section ranges from 2008 to now. The modern age, as I've defined it, is the beginning of a new era in comics, that being the expansion of alternative media influence on the comic book world. Comic book characters already had an exposure to outside media long before this era. I mean, Superman had a radio show as early as the 1940s. Batman had his courageously cheesy TV show in the 60s. I already briefly mentioned Wonder Woman and the Hulk's TV affairs in the 70s. Superman had a blockbuster hit movie in that same era, and Spider-Man had been plastered all over every possible form of media since his conception. However, after many poor decisions financially from both Marvel and DC, Comics were at an all-time low financially. However, media outside of the comics would only grow, starting with Tim Burton's Batman, showcasing the Cape Crusader in a more melancholic and darker atmosphere. And spawning off the Burton films, we got blessed with Batman the Animated Series, a critical darling that spawned many other high-quality shows and turned many kids into lifelong Batman fans. And don't think DC were the only ones cooking, as Spider-Man had a widely beloved cartoon as well. And you can't mention the 90s cartoons without bringing up the cultural juggernaut that was the X-Men. The 90s in general was a great time for the X-Men. The influence on culture was inescapable. They were everywhere. They crossed over with Street Fighter in the 90s, which led to the entire Marvel Universe crossing over with Capcom in one of the most beloved fighting game franchises ever. If you were alive in the 90s, you knew who the X-Men were. And this isn't even mentioning the massive surge in popularity of superhero films in the 2000s. But that newfound success led to a coordinated attempt to revamp their pre-established heroes, rather than try to make new ones. I mean, when you think about it, you can't really blame them. I mean, they're just trying to recoup their losses. However, it made finding candidates a little more difficult than previous eras. The characters in contention for the modern age are Deadpool, the mark with the mouth, Jessica Jones, the ex-superhero turned P.I., Venom, the badass Spider-Man villain turned a goofy anti-hero, Gambit, the smooth-talking X-Man, X-23, the female clone slash kinda daughter of Wolverine, Squirrel Girl, a wacky comic relief character, Spider-Man 2099, a very different take on the Spider-Man character in a futuristic New York, and the DC version of 2099, Batman Beyond. And last, but certainly not least, a character popularized from his hit WBTV show, Static Shock. The first and most obvious inclusion in the modern age is Venom. His striking design from Todd McFarlane and connections to Marvel's most famous character make him instantly memorable. Even more so when a creature as threatening as this does goofy shit like gorging on chocolate bars. And if you were around in the 90s and 2000s, Venom was being pushed hard. He was in numerous TV shows, he showed up in a bunch of video games, and he even asked for God to murder Peter Parker in Spider-Man 3. He's an easy inclusion. Speaking of easy inclusions, Deadpool, the Merc with a Mouth. Much like Venom, he was introduced as a villain, but his popularity had led the writers to expand his character until he ended up with the fourth wall breaking, joke-making, life-taking anti-hero that captured the hearts and minds of his audience. Now that we have the easy inclusions out of the way, the next two slots are actually kind of hard to fill. 
but ultimately I went with Static and Jessica Jones. Static's creation is a great story about a man not seeing enough people who look like him in comics and deciding to be the change he wanted to see in the world by creating an entire whole new line of black superheroes. These characters got so popular that DC purchased the entire line and made a TV show about that line's most popular character, Static, exponentially increasing his popularity amongst all audiences. Jessica Jones is a unique take on a superhero as she deals with alcoholism and PTSD from her troubled past, all while framing her stories from the perspective of a PI rather than a costumed hero. Gambit didn't really make the list because despite how charming and suave he is, he works best in the context of the X-Men team. Squirrel Girl is very similar to Deadpool as they were both lighthearted jokey takes on heroes, but Deadpool does that shtick a little bit better. X-23 and Batman Beyond both got popular from their TV show. Unlike Static, they were created solely for those TV shows. So Static is over both of them because he was actually created in the comics. The hardest cut for me personally was Spider-Man 2099. 2099, much like Jessica, is beloved by people who read the books. And if you were to ask me on another day, I might just pick Miguel over Jessica. But for right now, I'm picking Jessica because of the uniqueness of her stories and her premise. Moving right on to the old time list, all of the characters currently on the list were all given shows and movies in the era. However, Ang Lee's Hulk was received less than favorably. And the cultural dominance of the X-Men easily placed the most famous X-Man onto the Rushmore. But if cultural dominance is what you're looking for, then look no further than our next era. If the modern age was defined by a rise in outside media sources being as indicative of the success of a comic book character as their source material, the postmodern age is defined by the influence of movies, TV shows, and video games surpassing the influence of comics themselves. And the first domino fell with the release of Iron Man and the birth of the MCU. If the X-Men were big in the 90s and early 2000s, the MCU was gargantuan. And it doesn't just stop at the MCU. As DC tried to play catch up as they spawned their own interconnected universe with, let's just say varying levels of success, I could also bring up the animated DC universe that was honestly way more loved and respected than the live action efforts, or the Marvel Netflix shows, which I don't believe are canon to the MCU anymore. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it could be up to you. However, none even reached a tenth of the influence of the MCU. And that influence bled into the comics as many comic book characters started shifting to fit their MCU counterparts in an attempt to bridge the success from the MCU to the actual books themselves. Emphasis on attempt. You see, the average MCU slash DCEU enjoyer isn't the type to immediately read up on the source material once they're done watching the movie. Especially with the 50 years of history they'd have to learn just to enjoy a modern comic. But... Because both Marvel and DC are having financial troubles on the comics front, it means that they are significantly less likely to take risks in fear of digging an even bigger hole. Why try to bank on a new hero when Spider-Man or Batman guarantees sales? And while researching for this video, I've started to notice this trend slowly steeping in. However, that effect exponentially increased here as evidenced by the characters that are in contention for the postmodern era. Characters like Miles Morales' Spider-Man, Damian Wayne, Kamala Khan, Gwenpool, Spider-Gwen, Ironheart, America Chavez, Silk, Jonathan Kent, and Robbie Reyes' Ghost Rider. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it completely honest with you. The pickings in this era are pretty sparse. But, look man, I gotta work with what I got here. By far, the most popular character of any I've listed so far is Miles Morales. He's headlined two of the biggest superhero movies of the era, is playable in Insomniac Spider-Man 2, and is the main character of his own Insomniac spin-off game. He's easily, easily on the Rushmore. The next character that makes it is Damian Wayne. Both because of the heavy exposure to general audiences and outside media, and being part of many memorable Batman stories within the era. 
Now, my rationale for not putting Dick Grayson in the Golden Age Rushmore is due to him being a sidekick to Batman, and the caliber of competition was too high to let in a sidekick. So why does Damien make it, you might ask? Well, the answer is pretty simple. It's a lack of competition. I mean, look at Dick. He was compared to the likes of Wonder Woman and Green Arrow in order to make the list. Whereas Damien has to stack up against America Chavez, Robbie Reyes, or Gwenpool. So yeah, Damien makes the rush more. Jonathan Kent would have been a shoo-in for this era. However, he's had limited exposure outside of the comics, and after the Super Sons run, they did some weird shit with him by aging him up past Damien and turning him into an environmental activist out of nowhere, all while trying to drudge up controversy by making the character gay. You know, the old hackney strategy of making a previously established character an alphabet person, so it becomes the next culture war topic for the next, like, two days, all in a futile attempt to increase interest for the book, instead of, I don't know, making a good story. Alright, alright, I'll hop off the soapbox now, it's... Time to move on to the next character anyway. The next character on the Rushmore is Kamala Khan, or Miss Marvel. Kamala Khan makes the Rushmore due to her TV show on Disney+, Plus, starring in the Square Enix Avengers game, and showing up in that new Captain Marvel movie. I mean, sure, nobody played that game, nobody watched that show, and nobody watched that movie. But, it's still better than the alternatives. Now, the final spot for this list is... Up for a debate, because the most popular character left is clearly Spider-Gwen. However, it's actually kind of debatable whether she counts, because she is technically Gwen Stacy, a Silver Age character. However, this Gwen Stacy is completely different than the original. She has a different design, she has a different personality, has a different backstory, she's even a different age. But I'm not sure if I should open up the floodgates on alternate versions of a character being included. So, I'll leave it the personal opinion. If you think Spider-Gwen counts, then this will be the Rushmore. If not, replace Gwen with... And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. The answer to who is the fourth member of the superhero Mount Rushmore. There were a lot of characters that have massive uptick in their popularity during the nuclear arms race of superhero media. However, there are two that are the most notable. Captain America and Iron Man, the pillars of the MCU. And there's a really good argument to include either or. They both go through interesting and engaging arcs in the movies, that drew the audience closer to them in a way that hadn't been achieved in their decades of publication. However, I personally believe there's a clear winner between the two. So, the final member of the all-time Rushmore is... I am Iron Man. You know what? In hindsight, I think it was pretty obvious that the character who kicked off the MCU, the most popular superhero thing, would also be one of the most popular superheroes out right now. However, despite how obvious it seems in hindsight, I don't regret this little experiment I've conducted. It was kind of fun looking back on comics past to see the who's who's of their era. And with the slow but ever encroaching death of the MCU, and the rise of a potentially great DCU with new leadership. A new era in comics could just be right around the corner. Who knows what characters will rise and fall in our collective consciousness? Who knows what new ideas will capture the masses? But until that fateful day, I was the Boomer Zoomer, and I'm zooming.